Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the uh, wonderful prayer, Brother Charles. And even as we pray, God is doing a work and saving our generation, the Google generation, uh, from uh, help populating false teaching. Uh, thank you very much. And now we go to the, uh, uh, the session where we do a brief meditation. I just want to begin that. I'll just share briefly maybe uh, a 10-minute message, 15-minute message. Uh, so shall we close our eyes and ask God to speak to us. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for Fountain of Tears against Mountain of Tears fasting prayer. Lord, even as I take your people in a brief word meditation to encourage us during this time, I pray that you'll speak to us even as we look at the subject of miracles. I pray that you'll speak to us and I pray that you'll, uh, Lord, this message about miracles, Lord, uh, will stay in our heart and it will transform our life and we'll also share it with others. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, in the time where the world is really reeling under the corona pandemic, uh, there are some things that make us smile. And this news comes from China. Uh, and this news comes after uh, the wife of Li Wen Lian. Okay. If those of you who do not know who Li Weng Liang is, he's the whistleblower doctor of Wuhan, where the, supposedly the corona pandemic started in sometime in 2019. This man, this doctor uh, was a whistleblower. He warned people about this, the dangerous nature of the corona virus in Wuhan. And eventually he died of the corona infection in the month of February 2020. Uh, but when he died, his wife was pregnant and uh, just a few days ago she delivered a baby and she went to WeChat which is the WhatsApp of China and she sent a WhatsApp message uh, which went like this can you see it from heaven she's talking to her husband uh, I believe he was a believer a very godly man this doctor uh, Li Weng Liang uh, some of you have read WhatsApp comments about him can you see it from heaven the last gift you gave me was born today. I will definitely take good care of him. The miracle of a baby birth. The miracle of a baby birth. Uh, now, I want to just briefly talk about the miracles that Jesus repeated. And I want to show uh, how those miracles speak to us. Uh, Jesus did a lot of miracles. But there are times when he repeated a miracle as if to send a message to us. Okay, now let me first talk about, talk about raising the dead. Jesus' nickname is Funeral Spoiler. Jesus raised people from the dead. Jairus' daughter, Matthew chapter 9, 18 onwards. Widow's son, Luke chapter 7, 11 onwards. Lazarus, uh, his friend, John chapter 1, 1 uh, 11. John chapter 11, 1 onwards. Three times Jesus resurrect to the dead. That's one miracle that he repeated. Uh, now, what is the message that comes to us? The message that the miracle reminds me of is that as we read in the story of Luke chapter 15, uh, when the father talks about the younger son who returned back, he says, this son of mine was dead, but now he's alive. Uh, the message from that miracle is, it reminds me that Though we are dead in sin, okay, as the Bible says in Ezekiel 18, 5, the soul that sins, it shall die. So what I believe is, uh, yes, Jesus resurrected people from the dead, but how I'm interested in how that miracle speaks to me here and now. And today, Jesus is able to resurrect the worst sinner. Now, we just prayed for the, the children of the celebrities. Uh, many of them, uh, they are alive. And if you go to their Instagram post, if you go to Suhana Khan's post, that's Sharad's daughter, so alive, you know, and so, you know, bubbly. But inside, there's an emptiness that you can't miss. Uh, and they need the gospel. And the good news is that the soul, which is uh, seemingly alive, but if it's dead in sin, if that soul will turn and come to the one who said, I, I have come to give you life, life to the full, that soul will live. Okay, uh, this is a, a little longish Bible study. I'm trying to pack it in 10 minutes, so I want to move far, 
faster. Okay, the second miracle that Jesus repeated, okay, it's the, I call it the fish miracles. Uh, Luke chapter 5, 1 onwards, the first instant, uh, instance, the, uh, it was a, the boat was sinking because the people there in the boat obeyed the command of Jesus. Okay, Jesus, a carpenter, Jesus the carpenter uh, gave advice to fishermen and the fishermen obeyed and they got a boat sinking catch of fish. Luke chapter 5, 1 onwards. And then John chapter 21, and verse 1 onwards, they caught 153 fish. John chapter 21, and verse 1 onwards. So twice the fish miracles happen. Uh, what is the message uh, that what is the spiritual message that repeated miracle tells us? You know, uh, we must go to the occasion in Luke chapter 5, 1, on, uh, 1, 1 to 15. You know, there, uh, the, the, that, that particular verse in, uh, is, stands out. Uh, you know, Peter says, he says, uh, Lord, the whole night I have tried, but I have not caught anything. But if you say so, I will obey. The importance of obeying the words of Jesus. And that is why we, we read the word of God. Not to uh, make our head big, but, uh, but to obey the word of God. Uh, I'm, my wife and I have started an exciting a way of studying the Bible. And I talk about it in my Sunday 7 a.m. Solid Scripture study. That is tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock in my Facebook live and YouTube live. But I want to encourage us to read God's word. And not just read, but obey God's word. So if it is there in the Bible, I talk about it. So why do I, you know, uh, want to attack false teachings? Because the Bible says it. Now, why do I want to intercede for the lost in this program, Fountain of Tears against Mountain of Tears, Fasting Prayer? It's about interceding for the lost. Because we have Jesus' model for it. As he hung on the cross, he was still praying for sinners. He was not so much for praying for him, but he was praying for sinners. So obeying God's word. The fish miracles reminds us of that. And third, the feeding miracles. Jesus fed the 5,000 in Matthew chapter 14, verse 15 onwards. And, and Matthew 15 chapter, the very next chapter, Matthew 15, 32 onwards, he fed 4,000. Once he fed 5,000 men, and the next time he fed 4,000. So, uh, uh, and we know the classic, uh, we know that story. It's a Sunday school story. What happened? Uh, see, one boy with a lunch box of five loaves and two fish. You know, when that came to the hands of Jesus, that was enough to feed 5,000 men, a crowd of potential crowd of over 20,000 people. So what is our message? Start with the little that you have. Keep thanking God for the little that you have. You now the little that you have, you know, start with that. It, you might say, I'm, my talent is so small. See, I can't speak like uh, uh, so-and-so. I can't sing like so-and-so. You know, I I don't have the oratory skills of a Ravi Zacharias. Uh, you know, we can keep saying, talk about so many things, but the little talent that you have, start using for the Lord. Okay, give it to Jesus. He will multiply it. He'll multiply it. Now, in the year 2008 is when I started my YouTube channel. Uh, though we have not grown phenomenally, uh, today it's inching towards 3,000 subscribers. So I thank God for those day, those early days. You know, those days in 2008, uh, God spoke to me and I, I went to, a, uh, I traveled to Esra of Nanga, which is eight kilometers from my house. And I would meet a guy who's right now uh, where the chroma is right below that. There is a, uh, you know, a DVD man I worked with and I gave him one of my messages on what the Bible teaches about sex. And he cut that message into 10, seven and eight parts. And I created a YouTube channel and uploaded it, what the Bible teaches on masturbation what the Bible teaches on porn, and I uploaded on YouTube. And those days when you search for them on YouTube, it will be scrolled along with pornography because all the, there's no other Christian content, uh, especially from India. Uh, so when you look, search it on YouTube, my video will be there, give, bringing the Christian perspective on, uh, you know, on uh, matters relating to sexuality, uh, masturbation, and pornography and all that. But then all the rest will be soft porn, which uh, YouTube also carries, which you, we know. Uh, but that's how we started. And that I was just obeying God. And I was just trying to use the little that I have. I didn't have a great, uh, uh, I didn't have a media manager working under me. Uh, I didn't have uh, uh, six, seven volunteers working under me, but it was just me. 
but I, I started and God has blessed that work. And uh, I, today I, I, list, I hear testimonies from different parts of the globe talking about uh, the very content. Uh, one New York, one young man from, uh, from USA said, uh, some of the presentations that he listened to uh, via those videos and uh, via those articles uh, uh, you know, were, were the best that he ever heard. But if I had just said, okay, I'm just a little, uh, I, 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 I don't have technology, I don't have talent, I don't have you know, this, I don't have that. And if I just kept going with my life as it was going, no, th those people will not be reached. So that's the third lesson. The fourth miracle, set of miracles that Jesus repeated, sight for blind men, two blind men, Matthew 9 were healed. The blind, mute, demon-possessed man, Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, they were healed. Two blind men, including Bartimaeus, Matthew 20, 29 onwards were healed. Okay, the blind man at Beth Bethesda, Bethsaida was healed, Mark chapter 8, 22 onwards. Man born blind in John chapter 9 where he, uh, was healed. So, so many stories of Jesus healing, healing blind people. Now, that reminds us of, uh, uh, of the fact that we need to use our spiritual vision because vision is very important for us. Uh, you know, Jesus also warned the, uh, the Jesus who healed blind people also had strong words for the religious leaders who he called them blind guides. He said, if the blind will lead the blind, both of you will fall into a ditch. The importance of spiritual vision. You know, that famous verse I'm reminded of, where there's no vision, the people will perish. Uh, I read in the week magazine 2014, this is way back in 2014, every day 200 girls enter prostitution in India. Every day 200 women and girls enter prostitution in India. Of the 30 lakh prostitution, 40% are children. So when you, we must have our eyes to see that. Okay. Uh, it, now all that we do on online is not, it should not be that we go to Amazon and you know buy that uh, you know, sari and buy that churidar and uh, buy that uh, laptop. We need to, we need to see these things. And that should, we have to see them. We can't be blind and that should affect us. And, you know, and the way, one way it will affect us is we will start a ministry among uh, that thing that God, uh, you know, put on our heart and that affected us, that, that was haunting us, if I can use that word. You know, that thing that we saw was haunting us. Uh, the other day I was uh, sharing uh, with a fellowship uh, in uh, Memphis, Indians in Memphis, and they had, they were kind to invite me to share via Zoom uh, to them. And I was telling them about uh, the story of Amala Akineni, who is, lives in uh, my city, Hyderabad, wife of uh, Nagarjuna. Uh, she's basically a Chennai girl and she came to Hyderabad and she saw a dog hurt on the road and uh, she found out there was no branch of Blue Cross in Hyderabad. And in her large house, maybe in Banjara Hills or somewhere, you know, she started to bring all the injured animals, the cat and the dog and, and the long list and that article in the Hindu was fascinating. All these injured animals she brought and she kept it in her house. And then that, you know, what she saw affected Amala so much. These dogs, this hurting, limping dog, this, uh, this uh, hurting cat, I need to do something about it. So I need to take care of them. And then she started the Blue Cross of Hyderabad and uh, she's an animal activist, we know that. Now, people far more important than animals are hurting across. Uh, you know, our friend uh, from United Arab Emirates talked about the suicides, uh, which uh, the Arab, uh, United uh, Emirate Airlines employees, the air hostess are you know, contemplating or committing, you know, they're thinking of that, you know, they're moving in that direction. Will, that, will news like that impact us we need to do something about it. We need to share the gospel. We need to share the gospel. We need to, we need to give them the good news about Jesus. We can't be blind to their uh, problem. And then the next miracle that Jesus repeated, uh, possessed people release. Possessed people release. The two men from Gadara, Matthew chapter 8, Jesus delivered them. Blind, mute, mute and demon-possessed man in, Ma uh, in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus healed. Uh, the mute demon possessed man, Matthew chapter 9, Jesus healed. The boy with a demon, Jesus uh, healed. The possessed man in the synagogue, Jesus healed. 
you know, I will stop with this. Uh, in fact, there are 10 miracles that he repeated. I'll just do uh, the second part sometime else. But Jesus consistently, uh, you know, at least five times he delivered people in demonic oppression. Uh, you know, that is why we have a prayer like this. Because uh, when we pray, we are waging spiritual warfare. Uh, we are fighting against the forces of darkness still operational in this earth. So till that day of judgment and, and I'll post that as Revelation 20 and verse 10 says, uh, the false trinity, Satan, false prophet, antichrist, they'll be forever sent to hell and all those who you know, chase them, you know, uh, uh, all those who follow them, and all those who love them, they also will share their fate in eternal hell. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10 talks about it. Uh, Revelation chapter 14 verse 11 talks about it. Uh, so till then he's active. Uh, so see, even if he's, he's bound, you know, I know the scriptures talk about Satan being bound, but uh, even, even if he's bound, you know, in a way he, till the return of Jesus or till that final judgment when he's cast down into eternal hell, the devil, uh, you know, wants to do something. He, in fact, Revelation, uh, the book of Revelation uh, says he's, he's very, very furious. He's very, very furious. Uh, he's very, very furious. So we need to, uh, and when we pray like this, when we do intercession, uh, no, we can't do much with our physical power. But when we do prayer, that is, we do spiritual wrestling. Uh, there's a man called Epaphras, and I believe you read about him in the book of Colossians. He wrestles with prayer. You know, he doesn't preach big sermons. Uh, he is not an orator. He doesn't have a lot of money to give to ministries, maybe. But he's a wrestler. He's a wrestler. Epaphras wrestles. Okay, we need to wrestle with prayer because uh, Jesus was involved in delivering people uh, from demons. And at least there are five rec records of that. So when we'll close our eyes. And I want you to look into the miracles of Jesus and learn lessons. You know, Jesus did those miracles to demonstrate that he is the son of God. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4, miracles happen here and now. Uh, it is subject to his will. So uh, the miracles of Jesus, we can repeat, provided it is his will. But I believe there is a bigger reason why all these miracles are recorded in the Bible. They will bring in spiritual lessons. You know, I know there's a uh, cultic group which says that uh, all the miracles of Jesus uh, Jesus did we can also do every time we pray so if, if that was possible then the corona pandemic should have stopped because there are many people who believe this teaching it's not stopped uh, Ravi Zacharias would not have died in cancer Nabil Qureshi would not have died in cancer so miracles are subject to God's will so Hebrews 2 4 is very clear and there are other passages I can talk about but the reason why the Bible records all these miracles is that we learn spiritual lessons. I've just talked about five, five spiritual lessons in the miracles that Jesus repeated. Let's get them in our head and let's let this transform our life. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through these, Lord, five sets of miracles that you repeated. Lord, we thank you for this part one of this study. And I pray that we will have spiritual vision. We will use the little that we have. We will obey your word. If the Bible says it, Let's say that settles it and let us obey it, O oh Lord. And Lord, we thank you. Uh, Lord, we pray that we will give the gospel to those who are spiritually dead so that they will be resurrected. The Suhana Khans of our world, Lord, the Google generation of our world will be resurrected through the life that the gospel alone can give them. We thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. As we go to the final section of prayer for our attention, our attentions, I pray that you will speak, uh, you will bless us, O oh Lord. Uh, in Jesus Christ, my prayer. Amen.